Well, hi, everybody, and welcome back to another Admissions Partner webinar series. Today, we're going to be talking about the educator and influencer uh, portion of our program, in which case we work with uh, educators around the country uh, to be put in touch with high school students, uh, guidance counselors, offices, and career centers in order to make our program and our academy aware to their students. Um, to help us uh, better understand and facilitate uh, these interactions, I've uh, welcomed one of our uh, guests and a guest of honor today, Mr. James Capicelli, a uh, retired uh, admissions counselor, uh, college guidance counselor from the Montgomery County School System in Maryland. And in just a second, I'll have uh, him introduce himself, give us a little bit about his background. We'll go into some Q&A and uh, see if we can learn a little bit of something uh, look under the hood for the process of working with these counseling offices, getting into the schools, connecting with students, and how to make the most impact of these visits. Uh, we definitely want to use our time wisely when we're interacting with students. Uh, so what are those best practices when uh, out there on the road um, trying to uh, make an impact in a short amount of time uh, with these uh, offices, with these schools, and with these students? So. With that, um, let's go right into our guest's introduction. Uh, we'll talk a little bit at the end about the Educator and Influencer Summit and then wrap it up with some questions and answers at the end uh, for about the last five or ten minutes of the program. So uh, with that, I want to introduce and have the honor of introducing uh, Mr. James Capicelli, who uh, is a dear friend of mine and was actually my admissions um, counselor in high school. So this is uh, dating myself a bit. We're going way back in time. Uh, back to Poolsville, Maryland, uh, to talk about uh, the college admissions process. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, this individual uh, was probably one, one of the reasons uh, why I ended up in the Coast Guard Academy. So um, with that, uh, James, if you want to introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your background. Um, I, I know our guests have your uh, information up on the screen. Um, I'll hand it over to you. Okay, well, thank you, Alex. It's, uh, an, it's an honor and a privilege to be invited to uh, speak to such an esteemed audience. Um, going back, I took the, I took not even the road less traveled. Um, I did very poorly in high school and graduated uh, in 1970 and thought, uh, why not join the United States Marine Corps? And for a two-year enlistment and uh, spending uh, 15 months on the island of Okinawa with the 3rd Marine Division as a machine gunner. Um, it set me up afterwards to uh, pursue my education since I realized sleeping out on the ground and in all kinds of weather wasn't probably a good uh, career choice for myself. And uh, used my GI Bill to uh, get through college and earning a master's degree out in uh, Southern California, uh, entered the wonderful world of education as a counselor. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We're really happy to have you on board. Um, I know that our admissions volunteers are super excited to have um, such an esteemed and uh, veteran uh, admissions counselor, not just a, a veteran in multiple senses uh, that you served in the Marine Corps. And thank you very much, sir, and, and that you have been doing this for quite a long time and have retired from the profession still teaching, though, right? Still substituting? I substitute, yes, a, a few days a month just to, uh, it's just fun being around the kids. And now I have no pressure other than I take role and uh, follow the lesson plan left to me. I don't have to deal with uh, with the politics or parents. <laughs> Excellent. Always a good thing. Um, so let's go right into some questions here for you that um, I'll help uh, help you along as we go through the next about 20, 24 minutes of the program, uh, finish up with some Q&A and start um, right off the bat with, in what ways do guidance uh, or career counselors assist high school students? So what do you do to support high school students in their journey to, uh, you know, move along into higher education or into their career paths? Uh, the, the, you know, the, it's become very political, unfortunately, and, and what it all comes down to, it's a people industry. You must know your students. It's not know your audience. It's know each student individually. They all have a different goal. They all have a different plan. And, um, and to keep your biases out, uh, you were, to me, my attitude was let's springboard them into life. Let's, uh, let's look at all the different options that they have and, and keep them all, um, I want to say, fluid so that if they change their mind, they don't have to start back at ground zero. But it's, it's, I can't stress enough, it's a people industry. 
There are schools where they shove 30, 35 kids in a classroom, and a lot of stuff is missed with that. Uh, fortunately, at Poolsville in Montgomery County and where you attended, you know, class sizes were relatively small. Counseling sizes were small, and you got to know your students. Excellent. I, I'm sure along with that, um, the the where that shows most to a guidance counselor or to a college admissions office uh, is in that recommendation letter. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about kind of your experience with recommendation letters, um, how you uh, have formulated those, worked with college admissions uh, uh, offices to ensure that they're accurately complete and um, any tidbits or insights to those recommendation letters from the counselor's perspective? Um, absolutely. And, and, you know, as I mentioned, it's a people industry. Um, I would make it a point, and I didn't get to do it all of the time, but when college reps came to the campus, I went and introduced myself so they could put a name on the face of the letter. Colleges, so the University of Maryland receives some 40,000 applications. After a while, these college letters become white noise to them. Good student, top of the class, good athlete, nice kid, wonderful sense of humor. I looked at my letters as mine's going to stand out. I'm not going to write a check that the kid can't cash, but um, I took certain liberties with uh, the, to, to have my, my letters stand out. I recall one child, uh, one student who top of everything, and I wrote his letter as if he was as if I was taking a test drive in a Ferrari and he was the Ferrari. Smell those leather seats, look at that dashboard, listen to the hum of the engine and and take them around the track and don't lift your foot off the accelerator because this guy's going to take it off. That's a, that's a wonderful analogy. Uh, and the next question, uh, what are the best ways to outreach with counselors successfully? I know that we, we touched on a little bit previously um, our Naviance, uh, that, that's something that's used uh, in conjunction with rep visits. Um, not every school uses that, but in your experiences, what's the best way to outreach with counselors at these high schools? The first thing you have to do, I really, I, I, you have to overcome the stereotype of what and I'll, and I'll speak in broad, about paint with broad strokes, you have to overcome the stereotype of Saving Private Ryan platoon. You know, uh, those have been on uh, cable, on television countless times, and I think too many counselors have an image in your mind, oh, well, although it's not my child, we do take ownership of the students, um, that I'm going to send my kids off to a meat grinder. That's not the case with the Coast Guard, and certainly it's not the case with all the branches of the service, and not everybody goes into a combat role. But you have to overcome that stereotype. Uh, and, and so I would make it a point to, to get just a few minutes of the counselor's time just so they can put a face on, on who the rep is. Um, not only the counselor, but I would also look at the school's website and see who the National Honor Society advisor is. There's probably a robotics cl uh, club on the campus, a STEM club. There's probably varsity clubs. And those are the students I think the academy is, are looking for, kids with, with truly good, not just the grades, but the character that goes along with any of those organizations, and asking to come in, can I come in and speak to your kids and talk to them about the opportunities that are available. That's a great point. And I, I think I've found, I have found personally success more in, uh, you know, avoiding the cold call, uh, putting in a little time and effort in, into reaching out to that counselor's office, um, you know, spending a few seconds, like you had mentioned, touching on the humanitarian aspect, the college aspect, uh, just, you know, defining what we are, and then, um, you know, making sure there's a game plan set up as far as how to draw in students. Um, many times our, counts, our, our volunteers will get there and the student visit will sort of fail. Um, and they'll pivot to a counselor visit and work with that counselor. So can you tell me a few things that you would want to hear from a college rep as far as, um, you know, information on the academy uh, to get you engaged and to turn you into a force multiplier for that admissions team? Well, I think, I mean, you, you know, there's countless articles on this millennial generation faced with incredible college debt. 
I don't believe you're going to get that going through the Coast Guard Academy. And so that that in itself is worth its literally worth its weight in gold um, and, and, and getting that degree. Certainly, um, you know, you mentioned cold call and this and that. We get 50 emails a day on this college, that college, and, and I'll go back to it. it's just white noise. And to put a face on it that, you know, I'm, I'm going to be in the area, I'm going to be on your campus, give me three minutes of your time just so I can shake your hand, make eye contact, and tell you who I am. And then from there, you know, your foot's in the door, you can talk about the type of students you're looking at and the many different programs available, um, available through the academy. And the other important thing about the academy is you get your degree, you're going to apply that degree in real life, in real world situations versus, um, you know, I'm 22 years old, I got my degree and there's my cubicle in the back of the office and I'm one of many. And, you know, in the Coast Guard, you get to be a player immediately. It's not a very large organization. It's not like going to work for, uh, you know, any of these massive organizations where um, you, you literally just remember, you get to apply your trade and um, and use it in a very professional manner with a ton of integrity. That's great. And and I remember, uh, you know, we touched on a little bit as far as speaking with students and how to capture their attention right off the bat. I know oftentimes we can sometimes find ourselves spiraling into uh, the you know rattling off uh, statistics and rattling off figures, and you sort of see the students' eyes glaze over a little bit. I think that. Uh, in some cases, the best way to approach some of these students is, you know, they, they take life in 15, 30 second sound bits and uh, to really share a story and to share your perspective or your students' perspective. Um, I know I shared with you, we've got so many different affiliations of the Coast Guard in our admissions partner program um, and to leverage each of those affiliations in their own way so a parent can speak to their experiences through their student and an active duty member can speak to their experiences as maybe a graduate, as an alumni, or as, as an active duty uh, member out in the fleet, or behind a, uh, a computer is at, Cy at Cyber Command, or pursuing uh, their master's degree or, or higher education, postgraduate education. So, um, no, that's all great, all wonderful, great stuff. Thank you for sharing. Um, so, as a counselor, what do you wish college representatives would do more often or less often? I think more often I got to go back to it's a people industry and not just, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just checking the boxes. I'm at the school. I'm giving my spiel. I've got a handful of applications. Maybe we'll accept any, you know, whatever number of them. Um, and like what, just what you said, when you start doing statistics, we get X amount of applications. This is what our kids do. I, I think you got to bring it down to when you attend this facility, this is what you're going to, you are going to get to do, not what they get to do, but what you get to do. Good point. All right. Um, what is the best approach that you found to finding target schools or audience for recruiting and outreach? Um, as far as counselor networks and ways to get in touch with folks at schools, um, has there been any one particular way that you found is more successful? Um, I know most schools have information available online, but is there anything you would recommend to our volunteers for their outreach? Uh, when I'm taking tours on campus, which I know is difficult, I mean, you know, the academy is located in Connecticut. Not everybody has access uh, on, a, on a weekday to go to, uh, to New London to visit. But, um, um, I, you know, I got to go back to the, the personal touch with it and uh, making the uh, the advisor available to the counselor, to the student, to the parent that any questions, any concerns, you get hold of me. Um, on my college letters, I used to put my cell phone number because I knew that these people are reading these letters most likely late at night and I'm limited to a page and I would and I would put on, on again for top students, hey, here's my cell number, give me a call, I'll answer what you got. And that paid big dividends. And I would say the same thing uh, with the advisors. Hey, here's my cell number. Don't send me an email. Give me a phone call. I'll be. Ha I'll, I'll answer this in, in 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 real time. Excellent. Um, are there secrets to approaching students of different generations? Now, considering you've seen who do, who have you worked with so far? You've probably worked with some Gen Xers. You've probably worked with millennials, and now with Gen Z. <laughs> and have you noticed um, any differences in how students consume information, how they uh, 
process information, what they want to see, how they want to consume it? Um, is there a way that you found success uh, over your time in uh, counseling? Um, I started working in education in October of 1976, so in post-bicentennial, so I do cover many generations with that. Um, I think you got to tell the students, uh, what's a Twitter account? You get 140 characters. You can't do the Coast Guard in 140 char characters. Uh, you would be doing a disservice to the uh, the mission of the Coast Guard. And um, they love to get penciled. Yeah, I, I agree. So, yeah, it, you know, breaking it down into these manageable, consumable bites, um, trying to, uh, you know, encourage the student to pursue some of their own research. Um, I really, I mean, it's amazing that five minutes of research, you know, can produce so much nowadays and can really can result in such a difference on an essay, um, on an interaction. Uh, you know, to sound educated on outreach to a college admissions officer as a student um, on the topic of that particular school or that particular service can can really go miles for, for any student. So it's cer certainly important um, to, you know, try to get the student into your shoes, into your student's shoes, uh, you know, you know, really portraying this as, you know, like you said, this is something that you will be doing, not just I did, but that you may be doing someday as well, um, and then trying to get them to pursue uh, their own research through our online materials. So that's really great. Uh, James, any other insight, recommendations um, that you have from your perspective, uh, from, a, from a competitive high school, your perspective from a counselor's office, uh, from an administrator's perspective um, on the college admissions pro process, uh, I know you said in the beginning it's somewhat political nowadays. We certainly don't have to go down that rabbit hole. Um, I, you mentioned the parents. Do the parents play a large role nowadays in the admissions process from your perspective? Obviously they do, but in terms of uh, very few have contacted me, hey, my kid's applying to college, you know, what's out there? Um, you know, the, my experience is, and this is from Poolsville High School, which is limited in terms of the rest of the nation, um, it, it, it's student initiated. Uh, the student makes the big stink, and um, and typically the, when, the, when it gets the cost, that's when you hear from parents. And I think one of the things with the Coast Guard Academy, certainly, you're not incurring that cost. Um, um, and so if you can get that word out to parents, uh, what you're offering, and again, overcoming the stereotype of, you know, although you would save Private Ryan, you're not saving Private Ryan. Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Um, well, great. I, I, that covers most of my questions. If, uh, if you have anything else to add, I'm happy to, uh, to open the floor to you as well at this time. I'm also uh, looking to open the floor to our uh, attending admissions representatives and volunteers here, um, our admissions partners who have logged into to, uh, today's training. If you have any questions specifically for uh, guidance counselors that you'd like addressed today, um, please go ahead and click on the thought bubble in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. It'll bring up an instant messaging feature and uh, we'll make sure to get those read aloud uh, for the benefit of everyone. Um, so I, some great things were brought up today as far as who to approach in the schools, um, how to go about making that contact, uh, the importance of not just uh, showing up to speak to students because a student will graduate. They'll leave that school. Um, they may attend, they may not attend the Coast Guard Academy. Um, but in many ways, in many cases, the administrator and that, and that counselor will stay there long after. And uh, in some cases, the college reps don't ever visit the counseling office. So uh, it's a missed opportunity and we definitely want to take advantage of that opportunity. Um, Mr. Capicelli, any uh, you know handouts that you like to see from colleges? I know one that was liked by every counselor I ever ran into was the uh, the pennant, the college pennant. Yeah, that, yeah right. Um, we're big fans of pennants. Um, I, you know, you mentioned <laughs> the, um, briefly um, college reps coming in to see the administration or coming in and seeing uh, the counselor. I would say my last 10 or 12 years at Poolsville High School, one rep came in to speak to us as a group, and it was from UPenn. And unfortunately, 
what, 7% get into UPenn. So I was nice they did it. It stuck out in my mind, but um, it wasn't a big selling point. One, because the, the, the cost of UPenn and uh, – but, but they took the time to come in, and it did stand out that they did it, but it is what it is. Excellent. Well, it looks like we've got a couple of our members type in here, uh, and Betsy's got the first uh, question. So what is your opinion on reaching out to middle school students and counselors? The last college fair I attended, I spoke to two middle school students, uh, both in the eighth grade, that were in attendance, that were interested in the Coast Guard Academy. Um, so as far as age development and reaching out to younger students, what do you think, James? I, 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 why not? I mean, you're just planting a seed and, um, and just letting them know what their options are and how valid this option is. And again, the type of character you're looking for, because yours isn't just, based, you know, your admissions isn't based on GPA. It's, per, it's based on character and integrity. Good point. Uh, Mr. Neil Clark asks, uh, do you think it's a good use of time to try to meet with athletic directors or coaches regarding the Coast Guard Academy? And and I think I've got some input in this as well, but James, I'll hear from you first. Well, I, I, I would say yes, but you would get a bigger audience if you spoke to, uh, you know, a lot of schools have a varsity club where now you're getting all the varsity athletes together. And again, these typically are students of great character and um, and certainly good grades because they have to remain eligible. And there's usually a community service aspect to, uh, you know, being in a varsity club. Different schools have different recommendations. So you would even you would reach a broader audience speaking to a varsity club versus, well, just the athletic director or just the coach of the tennis team or the football team or, or you know, name your athletic event. I think you get more bang for your buck with the varsity club. Excellent. So those varsity clubs, those are in addition to the varsity teams. Um, so it would be a club where sometimes varsity captains or all varsity players are part of the same club, and you can try to uh, gather uh, folks who are either in the student leadership, peer leadership positions, uh, or all the teams themselves. So that's great input. Um, from my perspective on the athletic piece, I know that the coaches here, this is a Division three program, but it's been evolving over time from what it used to be um, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago to what it is now. I know a lot of the coaches here want to pursue their own athletes, recruit their own athletes, but there are times where even the admission staff and, and outsiders uh, can identify a student um, who may be a potential talent and use to the Coast Guard Academy athletics program. So. What I would say is encourage that student to create an athletic profile through cgasports.com, uh, reach out to the coach. If the coach doesn't get back to the student, it may mean a couple things. It may either mean they're in season, they're busy, um, and it may also mean that they're not pursuing them as a potential varsity uh, competitor here at CGA, which is okay. Um, you know, a good, a good portion of our cadets are not varsity athletes, but it's certainly one uh, portion and one way to approach uh, recruiting students, reaching out to students, and getting in touch with uh, some of the more competitive students in a school. But great question, thank you. Any other questions right now from our participants? Uh, we're nearing kind of the end of our presentation, and uh, I am super appreciative of uh, Mr. Capicelli being online with us today to answer these questions. Um, it's nice to speak to someone outside of our lifelines who can kind of look in and give us uh, their assessment and two cents on best ways to interact with students. Uh, as you heard, uh, one of those being uh, the critical component of that face-to-face -face interaction. Now, I know that we can't be everywhere across the country, but in those areas where we can have a presence, um, we certainly want to take advantage of those opportunities. So to set up these opportunities to go in and speak with counseling staffs, to speak with administrators, and to meet students would be super important um, and highly written courage by um, our team here at the admissions office. Um, we, of course, will always uh, make this uh, information available after the presentation and encourage any follow-up that you might have for myself, but I can certainly forward that on uh, for additional follow-up from Mr. Capicelli. Uh, we may have a couple more questions here coming in, but uh, for now, uh, James, I just want to say thank you so much for being online with us. Um, oh, it's really a pleasure. It's been uh, too long since I've seen you, and uh, I wish you all the best in retirement. I'm glad that you're still teaching. Uh, we'll see if any uh, other questions come in in the meantime. Okay.
you know, I would just want to add, you know, I mentioned the varsity club, robotics, STEM clubs, high school bands, they're massive. And who's more disciplined than a band member? <laughs> very true. Very true. Um, I, one last question for you as well. Uh, it, do you have any influence over the classes a student takes in high school or kind of guiding their academic curriculum as they progress, uh, encouraging them to take certain classes in one way or another? I know all too often we see students that are lacking some STEM preparation, maybe not from um, Montgomery County or from your uh, school in particular, but um, do the counselors have an impact? And if so, how much and how much influence do they have over those academic curriculums? We have a great amount of impact, but if a parent makes a big stink, that, that, that they have the last say in what goes on. But you can certainly add your professional opinion and attitudes uh, plus or minuses, you know, what the parent wants or the student wants. Uh, but if the parent makes us think that's what's going to happen. And I say that because once they call the principal and the principal gets a concern, the, the customer is always right. And that's the parent. However, wrong okay, that, may no, be. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. Um, so that's good to know. Um, and, you know, we always want to encourage our students to come to our particular academy with some sort of foundation in calculus, chemistry, and physics. Um, so oftentimes students will ask, you know, well, in senior year, should I take the AP Stats or the AP Calc Club course? Uh, we prefer and recommend that AP Calculus or Honors Calculus courses or IB curriculum through calculus. Um, so those are all little kind of minutia tweaks that we can recommend to counselors that they can then pass on to students looking to uh, compete in programs such as ours. Um, so Mr. Akala writes, I live in an area with small high schools, less than 1,500. Um, is it worth it to talk to each one or just go to large schools? Um, or are there opportunities, I'll add to this, are there opportunities to meet with all those schools or all the counseling offices at one particular time? I don't know, James, if you have any input on that. Um, I, I got to go back to, I would, I would take the, I would make the time to meet with them individually. I don't know how you would get them all together unless you're going to serve a lunch or a breakfast for them. Educators love food. Right. <laughs> That's a great point. Um, and just so our volunteers are aware, uh, we do offer an on the road um, program for counselors that we are running for quite a while over the last year and a half or so providing you know, go figure, providing breakfast for our counselors to come in and learn about CGA. Um, in addition to that, we also have a program here at the Coast Guard Academy called the Educator and Influencer Summit. It is a two-day, three-night program where we bring educators in um, on uh, travel orders and per diem, and they attend the Coast Guard Academy for a couple days to see what life is like here as a cadet. Um, to uh, hear from admission staff, to uh, dine with us at lunch and dinner, to get their questions answered, and to go back out as force multipliers and support um, our academy and our mission. So those are all ways in which you can kind of engage counselors. So if you don't have the time to visit personally, uh, at the very least, we can uh, you know extend the invitation to the Educator Influencer Summit. Um, we can you know reach out via phone calls, via emails. Um, sometimes you're right, it may not be necessarily worth it. Uh, I had a, a missions um, uh, director here though say, you never know where you're going to find a diamond in the rough. So uh, keep that in mind, take it for what you will. You know, if you don't want to reach out to every school, then pick your targets wisely, do a little research on each school. What do they offer? Do they uh, excel in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math? Do they send a higher percentage to college? Do they produce higher test results? Um, you know, try to reach out to uh, those programs within each school that may uh, produce students we, are, we would be interested in, such as STEM programs, varsity athletic programs, music programs, JROTC programs. So those are all ways in which you can go about that. So um, it looks like we're at the end of our time frame here, and I do want to wrap it up. Again, I want to thank James. Thank you so much for being here with us today to answer our questions and to help us learn a little bit more about the insight behind being a guidance counselor uh, and ways in which our volunteer representatives and our admission staff can help you and help other counselors around the country get uh, this information out to students. So thank you again for being here today. Any last words? I, I just wanted to say... I... A, a big thank you for uh, for allowing me this time to uh, 
took the counseling horn. Excellent. Well, always happy to have you, and hopefully we'll uh, get you back here uh, someday uh, to CCGA and to, uh, to participate a little bit more, uh, and that we can bring you on our partner program uh, and bring you on officially. So uh, thank you, everyone. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Have a very happy holidays if I don't hear from you. Um, and we will see you again very soon. We've got a, a new partner orientation happening in about a week. Um, and with that, I will say uh, goodbye, have a good weekend, and as always, go Bears. Thank you very much, Mr. Capriccioli. Have a great day. You're very welcome. Bye-bye.